So now let us continue our discussion now in a different measurement system. That is, uh, we are going to go into meter kilogram second. So here we are discussing motion of a spring and in this case it's given that it stretches two meters. Of course it doesn't write it here but beyond the natural length and the force required to do that is how many? 400 newtons. So if the spring constant is k what we shall have is that uh, 400 is uh, 2k and that gives us what? That k is 200 newton meters. Okay. All right. So then, you know, the equation of our motion, if we look at the motion caused by this, and uh, that is going to be d2x over dt square, that is mass times the acceleration, and x is the distance from the equilibrium position, and this is going to be negative k times x, k is 200, so negative 200x, and how much is our mass here? The mass is 50 kilograms, okay? So we got 50 kilograms as, sorry, 50 times, and then we have uh, d2x over, sorry, so then we got, uh, actually if we simplify this, okay, then 50 dividing the equation by 50, we get d2x over dt squared as negative 4x, or in other words, uh, we have d2x over dt squared plus 4x equals 0. So the uh, roots of our auxiliary equations are what? They will be imaginary roots, uh, plus minus 2i, right? And then the equation of the motion is going to be uh, xt as c1 cosine 2t and c2 sine 2t, right? So afterwards we have, uh, let's use our initial conditions. We didn't write those in the beginning, but they were given right here. That is, it's uh, released from equilibrium position, which simply means that x0 is uh, how many? Zero meters and uh, the initial velocity was, is given to be upwards of, upwards velocity of negative 10 meters per second. Upwards means that we'll take x as negative, right? So x zero equals zero. What will that give us? That, uh, that is going to give us, uh, let's put this as zero then or cosine of zero simply and here we have sine of zero and that equals what? Zero. So what will that give us is, uh, in fact I should have uh, uh, written it below here, but anyways we can see that this simply produces C2 sine zero, sine zero is zero, so that will become zero and then cosine of zero is one. So multiplication by one is simply C1. So this gives us C1 as zero, right? And then, I mean, we can substitute the value of C1 here, but let's just not do that. It's not too much work here. So this would be negative two C1 plus two C2, and this would become I mean, we differentiated cosine 2t, so by chain rule, that became negative sine of the quantity times the derivative of the quantity. And here, when we differentiated sine 2t, then it becomes two times cosine 2t, right? And uh, then we have that uh, this quantity is uh, at zero is uh, this is sine of zero, 
all right and here we have sine of 0 and that becomes equal how much negative 10 right okay and uh, then we have uh, sine 0 is 0 so we simply get uh, 2 c 2 cosine 0 is negative 10 cosine 0 is 1 so that just becomes this and so our uh, c2 is uh, how much that's simply negative 5 so the equation of the motion becomes uh, what in this case the equation of the motion would be c1 is 0 and c2 is negative 5 so this is what our equation of the motion is all 